This video contains spoilers for Uncharted 1, 2 and 3, as well as Uncharted 4 later in the video. There will be another warning when the Uncharted 4 spoilers begin. In the Uncharted series of games, you play as Nathan Drake, the handsome, charming, considerably murderous treasure hunter. The three main things that you'll be doing as Nathan Drake are platforming, so jumping and climbing, puzzle solving, normally in the form of ancient contraptions hiding forgotten treasures, and combat, which involves shooting and killing hundreds of people along your journey. Combat, and in particular gunplay, is central to games and has been for decades now. However, the Uncharted games have been subject to particular scrutiny because people don't feel as if the gunplay matches the narrative of the story or the character of Nathan Drake. There's a term for this. It's called ludonarrative dissonance, and it's used to describe the disconnect that players feel when the story elements of a game and the gameplay don't quite match up with each other. While I agree that the combat sections of Uncharted do disconnect me from the story of the game, I think that just crying ludonarrative dissonance is a bit of a weak critique of a game. Because of the interactive nature of games, as players we automatically impact the telling of the story. We have a level of player agency, so instead of just dismissing a game because its gameplay and its story elements don't quite fit well together, I like to try and turn it into something that works for me. So for Uncharted, I have always believed that Nathan Drake can casually murder hundreds of people because he is a complete psychopath. This conversation is as old as the game itself, but in most of the discussions that I've found, people equate killing people with psychopathy, and that's just not the case. Psychologists have spent decades trying to define and understand what psychopathy is. So for a bit of fun, I thought I would do some research into what our current psychological understanding of psychopathy is, and then see how Nathan Drake fits into that description. Our first step is understanding what psychopathy is. One of the most influential voices in the field of psychopathy was Harvey M. Cleckley with his 1941 book The Mask of Sanity, in which he describes 16 character traits that are common to all psychopaths. Cleckley's definition was included in the second edition of the DSM, which is the definitive and most complete resource for diagnosing mental disorders. However, many of the personality traits that Cleckley described are rather subjective and therefore hard to diagnose, so the DSM have focused more of their attention on the behavioural aspects which are more reliably assessed. This eventually led to psychopathy being reclassified as antisocial personality disorder. At this point in time, psychopathy and antisocial personality disorder are kind of considered to be the same thing, however it is recognised that there are certain personality aspects that go with psychopathy that aren't included in the definition of antisocial personality disorder. The DSM-5, the most recent edition of the DSM, describes antisocial personality disorder as a pervasive pattern of disregard and violation of the rights of others that begins in childhood or early adolescence and continues into adulthood. This pattern has also been referred to as psychopathy, sociopathy, or dissocial personality disorder. That's a little vague, but they then break this down into diagnostic criteria of which you need three or more in order for a diagnosis. I'm going to run through these now and see how Nathan Drake fits them. The first is a failure to conform to social norms with respect to lawful behaviours, as indicated by repeatedly performing acts that are grounds for arrest. This is Nate to a T. A self-confessed thief, his journeys involve illegal activity such as theft, damage of property, trespassing, breaking and entering, assaults, and of course murder. But the biggest point for me is the word repeatedly. The fact that Nathan repeatedly continues to go on these journeys game after game, knowing full well the extent of what they will entail, removes any idea that this is self-defense. Nathan Drake chooses this lifestyle. The second is deceitfulness, as indicated by repeatedly lying, use of aliases, or conning others for personal profit or pleasure. It's pretty obvious that Nate is not above lying to get his way. As an example, in A Thief's End, Nathan lies to Elena in order to go on another adventure after promising her that he was done with this life. It's not what it looks like. Really? We also know that Nathan Drake has lied about his ancestry to Sir Francis Drake for most of his life as a way to justify his obsession and lifestyle, so this counts as using an alias. Third is impulsivity, or a failure to plan ahead. Perhaps this is a bit of a stretch, but for a professional explorer, 
Nathan always seems a bit underprepared. He often needs to rely on his companions for things he really should have thought about bringing. Hey, Smokey. Need your lighter over here. On top of this, he never seems to have a backup plan for when things go wrong. He is constantly misjudging the length of jumps, the structural integrity of platforms and buildings. He just jumps without thinking about what the consequences will be or any alternatives. Next is irritability and aggressiveness, as indicated by repeated physical fights or assaults. While there is evidence that Nate tends to try and resolve conflicts peacefully at first, he does very quickly resort to violence to solve problems. He does seem to constantly find himself in shootouts and fistfights much of the time. Fifth, a reckless disregard for the safety of self or others. I don't think I need to convince you on this one. Time and time again, Nate consistently puts not only himself, but his friends and family into life-threatening situations, all for the sake of personal profit and pleasure. Six, consistent irresponsibility, as indicated by the repeated failure to sustain consistent work behavior or honor financial obligations. While I don't think that Nate's line of work could be considered responsible, I don't think there's enough evidence for this criteria. And finally, a lack of remorse, as indicated by being indifferent to or rationalizing having hurt, mistreated, or stolen from one another. This here is the most common reason cited for Nathan Drake being a psychopath. The man is literally homicidal, having killed thousands of people in his lifetime, and it doesn't seem to impact him one bit. At the end of Among Thieves, Lazarevich even calls Nate on this, and he almost doesn't even react. How many men have you killed? How many just today? That's it, boy. Additionally, there's also a criteria about showing conduct disorder from at least the age of 15. We won't get into that, but yes, there's definitely evidence of that. So it seems to me that Nathan Drake sits comfortably in at least four of these criteria. A failure to conform to social norms, deceitfulness, a reckless disregard for safety, and a lack of remorse. This would mean that he could potentially be diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder. However, there is still the personality aspect of psychopathy. The DSM states that a lack of empathy, inflated self-appraisal, and superficial charm are features that have been commonly included in traditional conceptions of psychopathy that may be particularly distinguishing of the disorder. The latter two are fairly obvious. Nathan Drake is known for his witty one-liners, even in the face of death. Great to see you again. Okay, Mango, Mango. What are you on about? Oh, it's my safe word and his good looks and an ego to match, and all this combines to make the famous Nathan Drake charm. <sighs> Seems like I am always saving your ass. Well, it is an ass worth saving. <laughs> but the first and perhaps most important aspect is where things get a bit tricky, the lack of empathy. While this is related to the lack of remorse point, it goes much deeper than that. Remorse is more akin to sympathy or feeling your own emotions, whereas empathy is all about understanding other people's feelings and emotions. So while Nathan Drake doesn't really show empathy for those he has killed, he does show great empathy for others. We see a glimpse of this at the end of Drake's Deception, where he tries to rescue the main villain Marlo as she dies. It could be argued that he did this just to try and save his ring, but we don't really know his motivation here. However, Nathan's empathy is shown in a much greater way in A Thief's End, and this is where things are going to get particularly spoilery for Uncharted 4 from here on in. Nate's entire motivation for this mission is to help his brother Sam pay off a debt. So when it's revealed to him that Sam had been lying and there is no debt, he just wants the treasure. Nate decides to pull out of what is possibly his most life-threatening journey yet, in order to protect not only himself, but Sam and Elena and Sully as well. The pivotal moment happens when they're leaving, and Sam turns around and heads back toward the treasure, and Nathan decides to follow him in and bring him back. Even at this point, when they're so close, Nate is still completely uninterested in the treasure, he's just worried about the safety of his brother. That's empathy. The lack of empathy is a defining feature of psychopathy, so it's hard to say that Nathan fits that diagnosis. Antisocial personality disorder? Almost certainly. But psychopathy? I'm, I'm not sure. But this brings us interestingly to Sam. Even though we spend very little time with Sam, it's incredibly obvious that he is just as bad as Nate, if not worse. Sam is shown to have encouraged Nathan in this lifestyle. He was the one who came up with the idea of faking their ancestry to Sir Francis Drake, and he lied about his debt in order to con Nate into helping him find Avery's treasure. He has a complete disregard for the safety of literally everyone, no signs of remorse at all, 
Sam has all the signs. Although he's definitely not as charming as Nathan, he still puts it on and is able to use empathy as a way to manipulate people. Sam is the real psychopath here. While Nate only shows the behavioural aspects, Sam has that and fits the personality criteria for a psychopath. And being the bigger brother, it's likely Sam's influence that has caused Nate to exhibit the behaviours that he does. This in no way justifies or excuses anything, but it does help me understand Nathan a bit better. And ultimately, understanding Nathan helps me to enjoy the game more. Thanks for watching.